Continuing from last time, uh, where we fit a line through two points, we are going to do something slightly more complicated, which is trying to fit a line through three points. So I'm going to add one more point to my plot over here. And uh, let's say that this line has to also go through the point for 1.5. Okay, That's the challenge. And where I'm going to update my list of coordinates here that I want to fit with for 1.5. Now, suddenly we have a problem. As you can see, very geometrically and intuitively, there does not exist an actual line that goes through all three of these points. They do not lie in a line. OK, so let's amend the mission. Let's say that just, just do the best you could. Let's draw as good of a line as you can possibly find that kind of goes through or goes close to those three points. OK? So what I told you before in terms of this matrix formulation of the problem where we're trying to find a line that goes through points may, seems like a, may seem like a really long-weighted, complicated way of solving a very simple problem. But it has the virtue that it's generalizable when the problem becomes more complicated and more challenging, um, namely when we have more points that we could possibly fit through the line. So let's go about the exercise of uh, updating our system of equations with the same two unknowns to accommodate for this extra point that we now have. Okay? So again, we have y equals the m, which is the slope of the line, times x, plus c, which is a y-intercept. So we still have these two unknown parameters. Okay. Now we have the, these two equations before, which are the equations that um, accommodates our first two points. And I'm going to write another one that accommodates the third point. So y equals 1.5 equals m, the same m, times 4 plus c. Okay. So now we have this system of equations. And importantly, even though it still has two unknowns, we now have an extra constraint. So three constraints. And we can make sure by double checking, by multiplying and, and comparing these numbers, uh, that this is indeed three actual constraints. Uh, there's one of them is not a linear combination of any others. Okay, so that's important. Um, and so what we're going to do is go through exactly the same exercise as before and try to turn this into a ax equals b um, matrix system equations problem. So let's see. I'm going to do it just like before. Uh, I have my unknowns here. There's still two of them. It's this vector of 2 here. Now, in order to construct uh, this a matrix here, what we're going to do is just read off from this, this, uh, this list here. So I'm going to multiply m by 1 times uh, times 1 plus 1 times c, pardon me. We have 3 times m plus c. And then we have 4 times m plus c. And all of that has to equal, at least approximately, 1, 2, and 1.5. OK? This is now my matrix of, uh, this, these are my matrices um, and how I set up my system of equations. Now. The fact that it has two unknowns and three constraints means that this system is now overdetermined. Okay? And the fact that it's overdetermined has a couple of implications. One, we know there's not going to be an exact solution. Okay? However, we can go ahead and try to solve it anyway, computationally, and try to get something that's close. And so there's another thing that's interesting I want to note about the formulation of these matrices that I think is starting to become close to you as we add more and more points, okay? Which is exactly how we're constructing these, uh, these, these matrix, these ma this matrix here and that vector over here. As you'll notice, the first column of my matrix here are simply all of the x-coordinates. This vector here is simply my y-coordinates. And this column here are just a bunch of ones. That's all they really are, OK? So if I had, you know, now we count from we count from two points to three points. Now if I had a 1,000 points, I've had a million points, this equation remains exactly the same, and I can construct it in exactly the same way. If I had a 1,000 points, I would put a 1,000 of my x coordinates right here. I would put next to them a column of a 1,000 ones. M and C are the same, because we're still looking for a line. So a line still has two unknown parameters. And over here, I would put my list of 1,000 uh, of y coordinates. Okay? And so these matrices, it turns out, uh, has, a, has, a, has a special name to distinguish it from a couple of other things that, that we can construct. 
Um, this matrix here is known as the V matrix, which stands for Vandermold, which is the guy's name. This matrix I'm going to call my P matrix. P stands for parameters. And over here, I'm, I'm going to call this vector the Y vector, because it is a vector of my Y coordinates. Okay? And in order to solve this equation, no matter how large V and Y are, P is the same size. And to solve it, we're going to do exactly the same operation computationally as we did before with two points. So we're going to say that P equals V backslash Y. Okay? So P is a 2 by 1 vector. V is going to be n by 2, where n is the number of data points we have. In this particular case, there's n points. And we're doing the case on the board where n equals 3. But n could be a large number. And y is going to be a n by 1 vector. And so this is the form of the system that's going to give you the best fit, the best line that goes through however many points it gives it. And that line is going to be specified by the two parameters that are the solutions in P. Okay? So P, remember, is going to tell me what the slope of the line is and what the y-intercept of the line is. So what we're going to do next in the next section is uh, actually try this in MATLAB and plug it in and see what kind of solutions we get.